All right, here we are. Welcome to another live stream. This is Wizard Fu, your old friend. Hi. Um, what I'm tonight working on today is um, AI. I've been working on AI for the last couple of days. My goal here this week is to have somewhat of a playable version of this game. There's no sound effects yet, but I want to be able to feel out this arena and these AI and feel out the the size of this arena. See if this is about the right size of arena. Really, that's all I'm really going for, but to get to do that, I really need to feel the AI and see. Uh, I need to touch the AI. I need to feel it. <laughs> um, yeah, but you know what I mean. I need to play around with this. So I got an AI that's kind of basically doing what an AI should, right? He's running over here and attacking. I'm the one. The I just the one turned into a blue blob there. So I could turn into a wraith. That's good. But, uh, so, other than that, this guy just runs around the arena exploring. Looking for other players to kill. Yo, what's up, PMC? How you doing today? I'm good, man. Yeah. Life's good. It's making... I love making games. It's, it's so fun. I get to use my creativity every day. Wish I made ten times as much money, but... <laughs> At least I could have fun every day. It's working on some AI today. So I guess that my first goal for this AI is for to for the rest of today um, would be gosh, I guess I want them to attack a little bit better. Make them. I want this AI to feel a bit more human. Um. The first thing I can do, though, is create all eight bots. Right now, I only have one bot to make it easier to debug. But let's go ahead and make it so all the bots are being put in there. <clears throat> yeah, the, it'll have bots, right? Hopefully, the goal is to not ever really need them. But um, some people will want to play this game with just bots, right? You want to practice. You don't want to, like, get your get all pwned by somebody else so you practice on some bots or maybe sometimes I don't know you know maybe we'll need to throw some bots into the mix if there's if a player drops or I'm not sure exactly what we'll need but um, a good AI is always you know an asset I think in a multiplayer game like this so I've got this little bit of code that drops there we go let's get that out of here yeah cool yeah so yeah the goal for this is to make it really human feeling and uh so that means not so accurate but sometimes accurate you know there's a lot of tricks you can do to make make an ai feel human yeah unreal's got a good ai quake battlefield 2 right So let's see, we got, now we should have all seven of the other bots and my player, so a total of eight players. Huh, okay, so here, I, there, I'm being chased by that guy because he was really close to me. At the beginning, oh, there's that guy. What, oh, are they gonna attack each other? Here, let's lead this guy over to this guy. It'd be nice if I could tell them apart. Here we go. Yeah, this is sitting there attacking each other. He's already dead. This guy's dead already, but why is that? That guy's dead too. It's two dead players over here. Okay, this is getting interesting, but why is this guy giving up? He's going pathfind target, pathfind target, pathfind target. That is happening. I dealt with this a while ago. I had a button or a bot attack pathfind, attack target. There. Yeah. Mm hmm. Oh, that's, yeah. It's kind of crazy, huh? Gosh, that's a really good point. I know. I never really realized that, you know, it's like, 
all multiplayer games kind of have a window of time that they're going to be popular. I, man. I always got so caught up in the magic of playing a multiplayer game that I didn't really realize that it wouldn't be there in one day. Huh. Yeah, that's, that's kind of weird. But I mean, I guess you could say that for almost anything. Right? Like, let's say you're enjoying a really nice book. You love that book, right? But uh, you read the whole thing, and then now you know what happens. So it's like... The second time you read it, it's not as awesome. Same thing with an album. Maybe you love a, you love an album, but like after a while, it kind of wears itself out. What's up, Voice of Grog? Howdy. Welcome to the stream. How you been? <laughs> I'm uh, just as good at typing as I've always been, which is horrible. I must I must confess. All of the keys on the keyboard that start with a numeric number, as in everything on the rows above QWE, I'm bad at. I mean, I can't even remember which one's dollar sign all the time. Uh, pounds really get me. The star symbol, I know it's the number eight, but I always have trouble finding it. I'm a horrible typer. Typist. Yeah, you're good. Right on, man. I've been well, too. Um... Yeah, life's good, man. Just making this game Wraith Binder. This, so there's something happening here where it, he tries to pathfind. Oh, I get it, I get it, I get it. Oh, okay, okay, okay. So this is, sorry, he needs to go into like a give up mode. This is what it is. So what's happening here is it keeps on going this sequence, attack, pathfind, and then he and then he goes back to attack target every time. He's like, whoa, attack target, attack target, because because there's a target near. So we want to only move into the attack target if we're not in this sort of we need to create a new kind of mode. So let's go mode what are, what modes do we have here? Let's do this. Let's call this give up. Mode 40-ish is giving up. So if he tries to pathfind to a target and doesn't succeed, then he goes into mode 40, which is give up. Did I, was it 40? Yeah, 40. I swear I don't smoke weed all the time. Um, sequence, give up. What's he gonna do in give up? What he needs to do is start moving around somewhere else. Not oh, so hold on. If mode forty, do something. But back here, don't try and it's don't try and get a new target to attack. If you're mode forty, there we go. Okay. So if you just uh, if you just Noticing this sort of AI scripting that I'm doing here for the first time. Maybe you're watching one of my YouTube videos or something. Or you're just watching this stream going, what's this? Um, this little text you're seeing right here, all this stuff, is um, my own file format. Well, sort of. It's just a text file format. But it's like, it's, it's it parses everything nicely. I got a thing that parses all this. But anyways, what this is, is just a, it parses it all into basically integers and floats and strings. And then turns all that into uh, an AI behavior tree. So the tree starts here, and then it selects, and then it, it's got a sequence of things it might run, and then another sequence of things it might run. That's basically how it, it's kind of a finite state machine in a way, but really it's just a call, what it's called is a behavior tree. You can look it up. So that's what I'm doing. I'm writing my own behavior tree stuff for this game, just like I did for Songbringer. So that's what we're doing. Uh, so if not if mode 40, we go into it, we can try attacking. But what are we going to do in mode 40? Um, probably like, it's kind of like if stuck. Path none. Oh, hey, I got it. If we're stuck, let's go into mode 40. Delay a little bit. And then we've got a sequence for giving up. 
if mode 40 we set no path no target and then we can do like vector like a random vector maybe for a little while So we'll call this like, yeah, give up start. So we start giving up for a little bit and then we'll have a give up end. So there's a window of time where the AI will always be inside this give up mode. Um, and so path none, target none, vector. So let's do, yeah, we already got this, so select. I think we might want vector last there, vector. So basically, all this is doing is it's setting no path, setting, erasing its target, putting itself, oh, we don't wanna go to back to bone zero until we're done, done. So sequence, give up, done, if mode 40, and, oh no, this needs to be mode 41. So target none, mode 41. Choose a randomish vector. If we're mode 41, go back to mode zero and delay a little bit further. Okay, and yeah, let's keep it at wild with all the AI here in the in the arena, in the battlegrounds. Let's see what this is gonna do. It's like one one dumb AI is kind of like, you know, you can deal with one day one dumb AI, you can debug it. But eight dumb AI gets really confusing sometimes. So I might need to turn off all these other extra AI and just have one. So there yeah, he gave, he gave up. Give up start. Let's slow down time here. Give up start. Boom, he just, it's like he didn't go into give up done. These guys are duking it out. What's up, guys? If we had animations for these guys attacking it, it might be kind of neat to see what's going on here. But right now, we just got some red squares that represent an attack box. Super exciting. I love red squares. We should just put more red squares. You'd be kind of neat if you had a whole video game that was just entirely just one big red square. I would, I would love it. I'd pay at least a dollar for that. Maybe you can move it around. Move, a movable red square. It's like what I've always been dreaming of. Hey, what's up? These guys are just... Oh, there we go. That guy died. Okay, let's follow this guy for a second. Oh, now he found me. Oh, there needs to be a wraith mode too. So that the guy that's just a blue blob right there, he he knows that he's a wraith, but I don't have any AI created yet for if you're a wraith. Cool. I like this. I like that we have this whole give up um going on there. That's kind of nice. But you know what? We've got Rand, we've got vector Rand, and vector Rand right now is um, is creating an exact vector from a compass direction, right? Let's let's mess with that a bit. Yeah, you like the the red squares. A live service with microtransactions, right? Dude, this is like the the worst game idea ever. But like, what if a publisher actually was like, "Yeah, that I, I'm into that idea." Phone's ringing. Hey, Dad. Yeah. Really?
Oh. Oh, well, no wonder. It's a huge trend right now. Ta. Oh, wow. Oh. Yeah. So good good profit margin there. Yeah, grab them all. Oh. Okay. And how's it going? What do they say? Oh. Oh, okay. Sweet. Huh. Wow. Well, cool. Well, let me know how the taste test goes. Wow, it's a nice margin. Cool. All right. Well, cool, Dad. Well, um, I'm actually live streaming right now, so I better I better get going. But that's awesome, Dad. Let me know how it goes. All right. We'll see you. All right, so we got the vector normalized, or we added a little bit of randomness to the vector. I was just saying like before that when I'd call this vector ran from the AI, it was giving me these exact 45 degree angles and that doesn't feel human at all. One simple thing we can do here is make all these vector rands add a little bit of randomness. So there we go. There's a little bit of randomness added to the vector. <laughs> it is called vector rand, right? We should be having some of this randomness as well as the random compass direction. Okay, so that did look good. I, I, let's run it one more time though. I wanna see that again with a little bit more focus. Um, what I saw there, what I noticed was that the AI, when he was going into his give up mode that we were just we were just programming right now, when he's giving up, he's got a few seconds there where he's, a, he's like ready to do something else. And um, See, if I stand off of, if I go into God mode and stand in the sky, he can't get to me. Now, here's something else. Here's the situation we need to work on. This is, he just keeps seeking and seeking and seeking me because he's close. But if I stand farther away, he'll realize, oh, I can give up. And then he said, oh, okay. This is another AI. I love this. I love seeing it. Look at him. Look at him dancing around each other. This is great. <laughs> This is really good. I mean, this is almost human. If they weren't just so, like, exactly passing each other, that would be awesome. Okay, I want to run this one more time because I want to see that this vector rand. This really made a big difference when I was when I noticed it last time. Let's hope that another AI doesn't come by and, and mucky it all up again. Here we go. Stand up here. He's giving up. Well, there you go. See that? See how he's, ran he's going off at sort of a random angle rather than an exact 45 degree angle? Why does he keep... What's his target? Hold on. This is a situation where I he shouldn't be giving up. What's he doing here? Give up, start. Attack target, attack path, fine. But what's your target, dude? You're not showing me your target. 
Okay, we need to have permanent target mode on. Or we got this little set label, so we can show the target always. Oh wow, his target must have been zero. What? So this is like, this is kind of how I approach the AI, right? I start off with something simple, right? Like I want the, I want the AI to attack the player. And then I get, and just keep on making it more human and kind of like rounding it out. Sort of like, it's almost like sculpting, but in a way you're, you're programming, program sculpting. There should be a word for this. Okay, he's giving up. There, attack pathfind text. What's going on here? Give up, attack pathfind target zero. Why is this targets it target? Hold on, you should never be going into attack target mode with the target zero. That's weird. Yo, what's up, dumb killer? Let's see if I can type one of these emoticons right. Bam! You like that? What's up, buddy? How you been? Um, and you know what? We should probably turn off all the other AI for a second here. Let's focus on just this one AI. So there, we'll just have one for now. And it's target zero. Oh yeah. So he's going attack target. And suddenly he has a zero target. Why, why, why is that? Target nearest opponent living. So target nearest opponent living is failing. Target nearest. Okay, so here's if the here's the failure case. Let's just rebuild this, set a breakpoint here, and figure out why. Why could it possibly be failing to find any AI that are living? Is everybody else dead? Oh, your final year project? You handed it in two days ago? And the dissertation? Dude. Yeah. Yeah, buddy. Whoa, man. I can't even believe that. We were chatting when you started, right? Or when it, or it was like your first year. Ah, man, time flies. Congratulations. That is so awesome. Gosh. I'm excited for you. What so what's on your what's on your radar for like next year? What are you gonna what do you wanna do? What do you wanna do with your degree? Uh, we can get rid of that one. We want a breakpoint there. Why would, that was weird. Uh, break. Okay, break. Huh, you know what? He's not doing it anymore. I think we might need to put back in all the AI. Not that question. Okay, I got you. Don't worry. Don't, you don't have to answer that. Work on some projects. Work up. Dude, I remember that. Now, now that you mention it, I remember being in a similar situation. Having to answer that question. Cool, man. Cool. Well, I wish you all the best and like, I'm, I'm just excited for you. Oh, right, yeah. You can do some personal work. Build your portfolio. Okay, let's see if we can trigger that. 
Yeah, you've been grinding, huh? Ah. Oh. Yeah. Good. I'm glad you got a break coming up. What? Oh, okay, now that's weird. So we're not even we're not triggering that um, at all. For some reason, even with all these other players in here, huh? Yeah, man, things are really coming along. I'm starting to have the the short overall arena shape created. I got this cool key art image. I've finally the key arts like pretty much done you know I like it about here um playing around with like a, you know things like maybe a vin vignette I love this whole look with uh you know, there's it without the title with the title you know it, yeah it's all it's all I'm, I'm happy with this I'm happy this has a key art image so that's pretty good I got a good key art image and the game's really coming along um, and once again, my goal, my goal is to have this play, like some kind of playable alpha or, or beta by the end of the year. So hopefully all of 2020 will be like sort of the beta testing phase of Wraith Binder. And maybe, maybe Wraith Binder will even be launched in 2020. I don't know. Uh, maybe it'll take till 20, early 2021 to, to really launch it officially. This is a multiplayer game, so it's almost like it really needs a nice, long, extended, open beta where people can just, anybody can beta test and just try it out. Uh, yeah, so it's a lot different than a single player game like Songbringer as to how I'll approach the beta phase and how I'll approach marketing in general. You know, mar marketing's different for a multiplayer game versus a single player game. So why was he tar- he was calling- I can't get him to do it again, but he had he was calling attack target and he was getting a target of zero. He was target nearest opponent living. Oh, wait a minute. Has nearer was it this? If it has near this squared, let's say there are no eids. No, there's no way for this to return true if there weren't any eids. Huh. Kind of baffled. Yep, multiplayer will definitely have to be solid. Um I'm glad I have experience already creating a real-time multiplayer game because I know I, I know I can make it solid. It's just, man, I got to learn some lessons. I got to learn some lessons from my last one because it was crazy difficult to create a, a real-time multiplayer game that's solid. The networking layer had to be, it was a lot trickier than I thought because I was relying mostly on, it was a peer, it was peer to peer. So that kind of had, I made each peer so that it would, um, have to, um, basically every peer would have to have the same, um, it was, I was relying on determinism. So I was, I was making it so every, every peer given the same input would create exactly the same output, same exact screen, same players and everything like that. The problem was that input would sometimes get garbled by the internet. You know, a packet gets lost here, a packet gets lost there. And so the problem was having to recover the correct game state based on um, what missed input there was. You know, recovering the exact input, fixing the input, and then fixing the entire game state based on the correct input versus the incorrect input. It was crazy hard. 
So I gotta, I really gotta learn some lessons from that and see if there's an easier way I can create a real-time multiplayer game and not without so much difficulty involved. Just to maybe make my path smoother somehow. You learn to, yeah, take your ambitious ideas down just a notch to make them achievable. Yeah, that's, that's wisdom right there. <laughs> yeah, multiplayer, it, it should scare you. It really should. It really should scare you. As a programmer, that should scare you a little bit. It is definitely difficult. These things are that's one of the that's one of the crazy hardest things to for me to to debug because you have a desync, right, that happens, which means that basically one one player's input or one player's game state is a little bit different than another's should be. And so those two game states, right, get into this weird desynchronized state only in the most random of packet loss situations, right? So it's like, how do you duplicate that? That was the really crazy hard part about multiplayer was like, yeah, farm man, yeah, it's never easy, right? It's never easy. I mean, game development in general is a very difficult thing. Like, as a game programmer, you should be proud of yourself because it is some of the most challenging programming you can do in all of the, all of programming, I would I would say, I haven't done too much neural network, you know, networking, machine learning, and all that kind of stuff. But I've looked at that code and looked at some of how it works, and I still think the game development is a little bit harder than that. Uh, I'd probably just opinionated on this, and maybe I'm wrong. But uh, ask ask any programmer; they'll tell you that game development is not easy in general, except if you're just doing like game maker and like unity and stuff yeah plan minimal aim to achieve that first and think about expansion improvement later yes i like it start small huh words of wisdom my friend words of wisdom okay let's go uh, um since that having all of the bots there didn't really change it Let's see if we can just continue on and focus on... I couldn't quite catch that bug right then. I'll try one more time. Let's see if we can catch it one more time. What I'm looking for is a situation... Oh, wait. First, got to run it from Xcode so we can hit that breakpoint. What I'm looking for is a situation where it tries to set a target and it can't. It's targeting nearest. It's trying to target the nearest player or opponent or teammate. Right, something like that, and it's failing. You know what? Hold on a second. I'm seeing a bug right here. If it goes through all this code and fails to set the target right here, it's It's, it's going to have its old target. Okay, so... Technically, what... Where is that? Target nearest. Target nearest. There we go. Um, technically, what should be happening here is target. Zero, right? That's a failure condition. We need that. Or, I mean, we could just simplify all this and say like that. If we can't find a close to see it, it still sends it to zero. But I think this is a little bit clearer to leave it like that. That kind of shows the intent of what's going on here. Um, so we'll leave that code there without, without making it more simple code. Sometimes I guess too simple is too simple. If it's not as readable, if it's not if it's not as obvious what's going on, then perhaps that code shouldn't be as simple. All right, so we'll leave it there so it's a little bit more readable. And we still got that breakpoint there. So we can see if that triggers again. But I think this should create a better behavior. So like for example, if a player had already had a target and you try to target another nearest one, and it failed. 
you'd want the target to be zero so that the AI could wouldn't rely on the old target. Okay, I'm gonna walk over here, just out of reach. Give up target pathfind. He's doing it again. Hold on, I gotta slow down time. <laughs> there we go. Attack pathfind. Give up start. Attack target. Gosh, we really need to have vector smart again. That was something I had for Songbringer was, was creating a smart vector, like a, choosing a vector that is smart. Do we have, do I still have that? Behavior, vector, smart, I do still have it. Get smart dir, does this actually work? Oh, check it. I've got this code still. Nice. Okay, this will make the, the AI seem a little bit more human already. Okay, let's set a breakpoint here. And we'll add the add this into the AI so that it, it runs this. So it will have the option when it's in its stuck and it's give up mode, it'll have the option of doing the smart vector. So we'll do smart vector smart. Okay, there we go. We got two random rolls. If it's so we've got a 50% chance of doing the smart vector and then another 50% chance of doing the rand vector and then lastly it'll just do target use its last vector and then do the opposite of that. So let's do that. We got the breakpoint already. So what I want to see is I want to step into this get smart dir code and see if this is actually working. And hopefully this will be seem a little bit more human as well. So as the, as I'm standing out in the sky in the middle of nowhere where he can't get to me and he tries to pathfind there, doesn't work, he goes into the give up mode. That give up mode should be a little smarter so he's not trying to like, see that? He did it. Oh wait, maybe he didn't. Okay, here we go. He's doing his smart vector. All right, stepping in here. We're looping over every compass direction. Oh, movement allowing. Oh, I forgot about this movement flag allow. Allow, or yeah, of course we're allowing all eight compass directions because this isn't a restricted movement. Hmm. All right, I was wondering why that summary string had in there, but anyways. So, we should allow that, yeah. Okay, so V is the vector from that compass direction. What's V? Zero, negative one. Right, so it's straight down. And then we're adding in, why is V.X being multiplied? Oh, right, yeah, we wanna multiply by, oh, this is just the collision box's size right here. Okay, we can simplify this code. But okay, v dot x. Let's see if that actually worked though. No, it didn't. It just multiplied it by one. Oh, and that's because v dot v dot x v dot y. Okay, so that that doesn't work. Um, but let's fix it up. We need the size of the entities. Collision box. And then we 
we want to make the Z size just one. And then we want to multiply the entire V by size. Okay, let's see if that worked that time. Get smart dir. It's more of like a get, uh, I guess it's right, get smart dir. Compass dir. Derp. Okay, run it from Xcode. Oh, what's up with this? We're missing a breakpoint there. It's because we, oh, we want that breakpoint to be there too. And vector smart, we'll just do, because we're testing, we already got a breakpoint inside that method there. Okay, so that's what we want to focus on. Now we just get, wait for him to do this random roll. So we'll stand on the sky. Oh, he already's doing it. Okay, so he gave up. He's gonna try a, one of his a smart compass direction. E dot move to allow to has indeed right right. Okay, we just want to see there. What's the size by the way? Size is twelve by eight by one. That looks perfect. Uh, v is also. Wait, what's there we go. V is, once again, 0, negative 1. This is a floating point value. This is also a floating point size value. Cool. And multiply them together. We should have 0, negative 8. Yeah, 0, negative 8, 0. Good. Okay, so then our collision box that we're going to be testing for, for collision, should be the entity's current position plus V, which is the size, just to, just to the side of it, and um, yep, with the size, with also the size of the collision box. So, box dot set. Let's see. Let's actually step into this. Okay, so we're saying this is box negative six, negative four. Six four, that makes sense. Okay, and then we're adding in the current position to both those. That's pretty easy. Okay. All right, and um, see if we're getting any collisions. No, we have no collision there. So we've got. So let's run in this all the way to the end now. Let's let this run to the last bit of this function where now we've got the DIRs, these vector compass directions are all, f okay, so it was, it's allowing movement in every single compass direction because he's not near an edge right now. And I'm pretty sure that is correct. If I go here and I can sneak Xcode out of the way, wait a minute, go like that. And then this maybe, that's not working. Whoa, whoa, whoa. All right, um, I guess we just gotta let it run. Yeah, well, okay, we'll keep the breakpoint on though. Just we'll, we'll see this one more time. Oh man, you doing it again already? Eight directions again. Okay, come on, give up done. There we go, okay. There we go. He's right on an edge, right? Isn't he? Yeah, he's right there at that edge. He's, there's no way he should be able to go to north. And boom, good. We've got south, southwest, west, east, and southeast. All those compass directions he could move in. So yes, this is now, this should be working. So if we return that, we've got a direction. If the di direction's none, we would do ran, but otherwise we're doing an exact I still think we should add a little bit to this vector. So e dot ai dot vec. Let's check that out. Make sure this vector looks good. Yeah. Okay. But I still think it should have a little bit of randomness added into that. So 
just like uh, vector rand adds a little bit to the vector. Is there an easier way to, to do that? Oh yeah, totally. Can shorten this up a little bit. Just go make a V3, do plus equals. So there's vector rand. We've got it. We're adding a little bit of randomness and vector smart as well. So, but less. Let's do less randomness. Let's make that an eighth versus a quarter. Let's get rid of the old breakpoints. And oops, well, I wanted that one. Dang it. Oh well. So we want this, and we want to just check run vector rand again one more time. All all this is just to make the the AI feel more human, you know. Do less stupid computery robotic stuff and more human stuff, more stupid human stuff. It can it can be stupid, just not not robotic. All right, vector smart, cool. We've got e.ai.vec. Really, this should be a local variable. We're moving straight to the left, negative one on the x. And we mold, we add in a little bit of vector, so x and y should get a little randomness. Cool, that looks good. Yeah, it's a floating point, good. And then we normalize that. Great. Okay. It's not going to do his vector rand. Come on, man. Don't you want to do vector rand? There we go. Okay, vector rand, same kind of thing. We've already set the AI's vec. This one's y negative one. So we add a little bit of randomness in. Then normalize it. Looking good. Okay. I'm happy with that. <laughs> yeah, right? I run off the map in god mode and he's like, wait a minute. Just a second ago, I targeted that player and he was at the position 64, negative 50. Now he's nowhere to be found. What is going on here? Could it be aliens? Okay. We've actually done quite a few things already. I think I've, I think I might actually want to check all this in before I work on the seek thing. Yeah, this is all good. Checking it in. And this is um I think bots have a give up mode. Ah, that's what all that is. Okay, so the one thing I was noticing before is that it is that if I stand really close to the player or to the to the bot and the bot cannot find any way to possibly pathfind to where I am, like as if I were standing in the middle of the sky or standing in the middle of the, the walls, he'd be like, I can't get there, but he's so close, I just want to keep seeking. Seek five, seek six, seek seven, seek eight, seek forever. See, something is just wrong here, right? We need to, oh, I know how to do this. This is what timers are for. Give up, start. We're going to start a timer. So, once that timer's done, no, wait, no, seek. Right, because we've got path. 
if it's if he's pathfinding, then he has a particular path that he wants to follow. We don't really need it there. But if we're seeking, we should set a timer so we don't keep seeking for too long. Wait a minute, so maybe he should actually go into a separate mode for seeking. Oh, wait a minute. Also, we've got if mode 40 here. We'll also do not if mode 41. I could, okay, so I could set a timer. Hmm. If I set a timer, oh, it's kind of tricky. Yeah, I think it need. I think it needs a mode. Right, this is a great question, Dummy Killer. Totally ap appropriate to what's going on here. Will will the enemies have a certain like bubble that they will have? They'll only be able to seek you within that bubble. Yeah, with there's currently that's it's kind of working that way, right? They will only seek, which means all the, all all I mean by seek is that they're setting a vector in exactly in the direct direction towards you instead of towards their path or whatever else might be going on they're seeking exactly towards their target and that only happens if they're near to you or to their target by 120 voxels approximately so yeah currently there's a range for that so they won't just try and yeah chase well but but chase you infinitely that's actually that's actually kind of more of like a time type thing that's what i'm trying to do here i'm trying to create some kind of timer so that they can only seek you for, say, a total of like 10 seconds. Yeah, I think it needs a mode. All right, so let's, let's create a different mode for... Um, let's actually make 40... Call is directly seeking and 50 is going to be give up so we're going to change the give ups okay we're going to give ups we also have a seek so we're going to have to pull this out here if target any Kind of need to put some blocking into this stuck one here. So select either if target none or if target far 120. Now we can go and create a whole sort of mode where he's uh, directly seeking. So seek, call it seek start. If target any, target near 120. Set mode 40. 
directly start moving towards the target. Actually, we don't need to set a vector just yet. Let's go sequence seek start. Oh, and this is not if mode 40. If we're not already in mode 40, then we can go into mode 40. Otherwise, if we are mode 40, this is seek, uh, just seek. We have a target. We know that. So we want to just do vector target. We probably should add in the safe, just for safety's sake, if target any right there. And then a delay. You've been programming a lot lately? Cool. Yeah, when you're when you're procrastinating, you watch game dev streams. Uh sorry. Yeah, Luna Lux. Sweet. How's her game? That reminds me of Watson and Holmes. When they meet the doctor, the female doctor. Right, yeah. Right, right, right. They have this sort of, oh, yeah, an elastic bubble. I like that. Sort of a flexible bubble. Maybe if they're pissed off enough, their bubble might be a little bit bigger. That's kind of what we're trying to do here. This, this is a kind of an elastic bubble with a timer. A little bit of a timer. Oh, there you go. That's what we need. Seek Start needs to set a timer. So we go into mode 40, but we also set a timer of something random. Let's say two to four seconds to start with. So if we're see we're gonna seek as long as we I mean if the time oh we probably should just do it this way. If sequence seek done if mode forty and if timer is up then we're done. Mode, go back to mode zero. Delay a little bit. Um, probably should set target none. Nope, nope. We don't need to set target none. We probably should set vector none though. Nope, nope. We probably shouldn't. <laughs> we might want to keep that vector. It might be seem more realistic for a, an entity to keep its vector for a little bit yeah yeah okay so yeah if your mode 40 and the timers up then Wait, I think it's if timer is zero. Mode zero. If if otherwise, if we're in mode 40 and we still have a target, then s s keep seeking that target. Oh, you know what? I just thought of something that could make it make the whenever I call vector target, it sets a vector directly towards the target. But it would be a little bit more human if the vector would uh, be a little bit random, right? If it had a little randomness to the vector target. But it'd be great if that were based on um, the AI's intelligence. And right now I've got the AI's intelligence at full on 1.0. That's like full intelligence. Let's back that off to half intelligence. And then we can add in some of that vector to the, when we call vector target, 
we can add a little bit E3, right, this is something, yeah, something like this, yeah, one girl in your entire year, yeah, when I was at, um, I went to the Oregon Institute of Technology for a couple years, never graduated but um that was kind of like my my university years um there was like i think the the ratio of men to women at my school was like 80 percent men 20 percent women so it's one of the reasons i never never finished college i went off chasing girls like i'm gonna, I'm gonna get out of here do something with my life that involves women because i love them i love you women yeah, game design, 3D modeling, sculpting, level design. Yep. It's getting, um, you know, girl gamers are becoming a bigger thing now, too. It's not as, it, gaming in general used to be kind of male dominated, but now there's, a, there's more female gamers. That's kind of neat to see. So I'm adding in a little bit of randomness based on the AI's intelligence. When we're targeting, uh, directly targeting something. There we go. Okay. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. That's right. Hey. Seek done. We go back to mode zero, but seek if mode 40 target any vector target. This is a little bit too long. Let's make that more like this. All right, all right. Okay, let's see if this works. What we should hopefully witness is the AI, when I'm standing somewhere it cannot get to, it goes into the seek mode, it sets a timer for a while, and then after the timer's done, it stops. But you know what I just realized? It might go back into its seek mode right away. There, oh, target path line, target path line. Damn it, oh, it was, it was doing that thing again. And I didn't have it. Ugh, I wasn't debugging. Oh, we almost could have caught that one. Okay, what was that again? It was target. Target nearest. Ah, here we go. Yeah. Oh. I hope so too, PMC. All right. We'll see you, Dominic Killer. Yeah, see you around, brother. Good luck. Good luck with your dissertation, man. Let's see if he does it again. I think you. I, what's probably the issue is that I got this breakpoint in the wrong place. Right? Or maybe I'm just not catching it. Maybe I'm not realizing what. Hmm. Okay, cool. Here we go. Vector target. Vector is negative 41. We can add in a little... Oh, no. We want to normalize first. Normalize that first. Okay, I'm glad I checked that. So we set a vector, we make sure it's got a you know maximum length of 1.0, then we add in this tiny little random number because this tiny little random number needs to be based on 1.0. And then we normalize again once we've added that so we can get a proper vector. All right, that time, this time, hopefully it'll be right.
All right, we got negative 50, 66. Oh, we might even want to set v.z to zero. Okay, yeah, I think that's a good idea. We're gonna set v.z to zero right here. So we're not taking up any of the normalized uh, length of the vector just on that. Okay. That's good. Now we've got a little bit of rent. Well, wait, I forgot to check if it's if the AI that intelligence actually factors in there correctly. So let's break point that one more time. Okay, since we're multiplying by intelligence, uh, right, V3, so let's step through this constructor. And then the multiple, so we're One point oh. I thought this was supposed to be zero point five. What? So the entity. This is entity. Why is your name not coming through? Parent one. What? This looks like. Oh, okay. This is the Skybot. This is my particular friend, the Skybot. We want to call this when we want to see this when the player. Oh, this is so easy to catch this for Skybots. Oh, you know what? Let's take the Skybot's intelligence down a little bit too. Skybot. Your intelligence is now 0 0.618. Because I love the fire ratio. All right, let's see that again. And now those skybots will also use the vector target. So now, this is great. Now a robot will seem more human. <laughs> so great. That's what I always wanted. Yeah, right. Okay, so one. Doo -doo -doo -doo. Why does your name not have a name? I think the name should be Skybot. It, it does have the name Skybot. Why isn't that working? Sometimes LLDB can get weird with its oh, summary strings. All right. But anyways, AI on intelligence should be good. 617. So... V is currently 0 0.822, 0 0.569, and we add a little bit in. Yeah, we get a little bit, just a little bit. But intel if intelligence was zero, oh, okay, I got this backwards. All right, if intelligence was zero, then we would want this to be full, for that this to be 1.0. And if intelligence is 1.0, we want this to be zero, so this needs to be one minus. Okay, enough debugging this. We this is good enough. We can get rid of that breakpoint. But this one, I'm still curious if it's actually happening. So we'll leave it on.
Yo, what's up, Bidas? Yeah, man, how's it going? I've been seeing all your posts. I've been check. I got your game on my wish list. I'm stoked, dude. How's it? How's it been going? Tell me how it's been going with Bidas Gone. Thank you, thank you, man. Appreciate it. Totally appreciate that. But tell me about it. Tell me about your game, man. How's things going? I can't wait till it comes out. If anybody's wondering, It Is Gun has a game called It Is Gun on Steam. Well, it's not on Steam yet, right? When does it come out? I got it on my Steam wish list. I wonder why it's not coming up. Maybe because it's not out yet. But uh, yeah, if you follow Ida's Gun on Twitter, you can check out his freaking awesome game. And um, there it is. There's the this, this Steam link. Check this out. This is what his game looks like. So uh, something I've been wondering, it uh is um, what's this game feel? What does it is gun feel like outside of these boss fights? Like I got, I get a good feeling for what the boss fights are kind of like. We've got some like it looks like some twin stick shooter action going on with the bosses, right? But what's the gameplay like outside of these boss fights? What is it exploration? How much exploration is there? Is there story? That kind of questions. Is it a is this a roguelike, by the way? Is it also is it a roguelike or is it save your progress? It's content complete? Dude, nice. Extra polish and content? Dude. Oh, it's exciting. You're almost there. Woo! Right on. Yep. This is like a sweet game. Yeah, so I'm curious about yeah the game the gameplay content outside of uh, boss fights, and I'm also curious about a publisher. Have you got a publisher, or are you doing this all on your own, man? Because you're doing an excellent job. Your tweets are awesome. You've grown so much on your uh, your. Your Twitter followers, you dude, you're going through the roof, man. It's dope. I could learn a thing or two just by looking at your tweets, man. So your marketing's going really well, dude. It seems to me. Hey, thanks, Zach Ware. Appreciate that. Thanks for saying congrats on Songbringer, man. There will be it. There will be a Songbringer two at some point. Actually, next game I'm planning on Songbringer two, but it's gonna be a little while. Wraithbinder here I'm working on is going to be like 2020. It'll, it'll take up all of 2019 and 2020. And then hopefully I'll start work on Songbringer 2 in 2021. and Because I'm really excited to finish this. At least like a trilogy of games with Songbringer. And uh, it'll probably be... Songbringer 2 will probably be using this 3D engine I've been making here for Wraithbinder. With the whole voxels and all that. So um, it'll be pretty neat to take this the whole style... This, the whole like... Zelda E style, but then go 3D with it and like have like a three dimensional exploration of a Zelda E world. I'm really excited for that. I'm not sure if Songbringer 2 will be um, completely procedural or partially procedural, maybe. Some people really hated procedural, some people love the procedural part of it. So it's kind of, I guess it's kind of up to me. Do I want it to be procedural or not? So, but yeah, this is kind of what this is kind of the visual engine that will. Probably Power Songbringer 2 is the same engine that I'm using here for Wraithbinder. Cool. Lots of exploring. Spirit Cat. Yeah, the Spirit Cats. New weapons and power. Sweet. Stories. Sweet. Cool, man. So, it, I'm assuming it saves your progress then, right? Oh man, that's great. Yeah, you know, it, it maybe Songbringer inspired some of it, but really you made your own thing. It's definitely a unique art style that you have at this point. And um and that 
that's a really encouraging thing for any artist out there, right? This is a worry that a lot of artists have is like, oh, if I if I start sharing my art online, then somebody's going to steal my art style. But really, there's no such thing, dude. No one can actually steal your art style because your art style is not actually yours <laughs> to begin with. Your art style comes from somebody else's art style. You've been influenced by someone else. That someone else was influenced by someone else before that, and everything is a remix. It's actually a website. You should check it out. If you're, if you're curious about this topic, if you're curious about whether you should share your art or not, don't worry about it. Your art is going to turn into its own thing, even if you are inspired by someone else. And yeah, it may be similar in style, right, to something else, but really, it'll have its own unique flavor. So don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. That's not, that's not a message to you, Edis. That's a message to anyone that's worried about their art style being too similar to another game or whatever. Don't worry about that. Okay, cool. Auto saves. Sweet. I'm glad. I'm glad. I, I, I love and I hate roguelikes. You know, like I, actually I mostly hate roguelikes. <laughs> I, uh, that was my, that was my issue with, um, Below. I was all stoked about Below, and I was waiting for years for Below, and then I, and then I finally bought Below and realized it was a roguelike, and I was like, damn it. This game would be so cool if it wasn't a roguelike. But it is a roguelike. Right, yeah, posting every little thing you can do, that's totally, that's, I, I'm on the same, I'm same on the same wavelength. I've been bad at it so lately. I'm like, I just, I don't ever, I feel like I don't have anything to show for Wraithbinder yet, but I should start, I should start posting more GIFs anyways. Right? Y yeah, this is a good, this is super good advice for anybody that's, that's like getting into your own marketing, or even if you're doing your own marketing and you need to do a better job, which is me. <laughs> um, only good is going to come from your from your marketing efforts, right? If you go and you post a, a GIF somewhere, you post a GIF on Twitter or whatever, it's not like something bad's going to happen. You're going to get as few people like it. You're going to get as some people follow you. And you keep doing that and you'll have tons of followers. What's, um, so you got any tips for people in building their followers like on Twitter? I'm stoked, man. I'm so stoked for your game. When um, I probably shouldn't even ask when it's gonna come out. That's a, I hated getting that question when Songbringer was almost out. Everybody's like, "When's it coming out? When's it coming out?" So I'm not asking you that. I'm gonna say, you know what? Take all the damn time you need to make your game as dope as you can. I'm excited for you whenever it comes out, and I'll, I'm gonna be buying it day one. I'm going to be buying it day one for me. Whenever day one is, that that your your game might have its own day one, but I'll have my own day one for when I realize that your game is a day one. And on that day one, I'll be buying your game. Just to let you know. Because <laughs> I'm not always Johnny on the spot with everything. Oh, and the other thing, I was curious if you're working with a publisher or anything. Okay, what were we doing here? Vector, oh yeah, this vector target stuff. Let's see if we can get. Oh yeah, posting with hashtags. Oh, retweeting several times throughout the day. Interesting. Yeah. What are you, so? Gosh, that's kind of a, why not? You as in everyone? Okay, here's my question for you about retweeting several times throughout the day. It's probably a really good idea, but I hear, I hear some, I got some questions about that, right? If I does, do you find that anyone gets annoyed by that? Is is anyone that's following you go like, hey, it's annoying that you've retweeted this several times. You're flooding my, you're flooding my um, 
my feed. Does any, do you ever get did anyone say that? If not, then it's got to be a goddamn good idea. And I should probably start doing the same thing. But it's as I wonder if anyone finds that. I mean, for, okay. Oh, sweet, you've been working with armor? Right on. Dude, they're awesome. They're the ones that did, um, uh, Kingdom Rush, right? Yeah, like, if I, if I think about it from my own perspective, though, when I hop on Twitter, the only thing that would actually be annoying is if someone's tweet was, like, right one after the other, right? If somebody launched a tweet and then a minute later, another tweet, and then a minute later, another tweet, my whole feed would fill up with their tweets, right? Um, but if you just do it throughout the day, like you're talking about, right? Like every few hours, then it's not like you're going to be duplicating your, you know, duplicating up. You're not going to be like filling up someone's feed. So I, I think that's probably not an issue. But I'm still interested in hearing your thoughts on it. What made you start doing the whole retweeting things? Did you did you learn that from someone? Did you start doing it yourself? Yeah, I've never had anyone be vocally annoyed. Yes. Ah, good attitude, man. I love it. Yeah. I'm going to read this out loud just in case there's anyone... I can't read <laughs> that's, that's viewing this stream. Um, so basically we're talking about, you know, the whole retweeting your own tweets thing. And he said, lots of people have asked that. He said, I've never had anyone be vocally annoyed with me. I imagine some have unfollowed because of it, but I imagine if they unfollowed me because of that, then they were probably never going to get my game to begin with. Totally. Totally. And that's why I'm saying it's such a good attitude to have, man. And it's true. It's true. It's funny how this is like, we're talking about people here, right? We're talking about people and people skills and marketing is all about that. And to being a, being a successful indie game developer today, you have to be good with people, right? If you're not, unless, unless you just have a, a kick-ass publisher that does all your publishing work for you, but most indie game developers aren't in that situation. Most indie game developers have to do their own marketing in some some sort of fashion, right? And this is the attitude that's really good to have because you're breaking it down to where people, right? Real people are if they're if they're going to unfollow you because of some little thing, then they're probably not the kind of person that should genuinely be following you in the first place. So, people skills, man, they're important. And and they should not be overlooked if you're an indie developer that wants to succeed on your own, they want to build your own following, you want to cuz and and building your own following is something that will attract a publisher too. If you're if you're in this situation where you're like, all I got to do is build a great game and sell it to a publisher, that's not really how it works usually. Usually a publisher wants to see some sort of success or some sort of following before they buy your game. It's, it's not just the game, it's the following as well as the game. Yeah, so refresh followers in different time zones. I have the same situation. Lots of followers in different time zones. Yeah, right on. Yeah, dude, I'm, I think you're killing it. I think you're doing a kick-ass job. Like, you're making people aware of your game really, really well. Um, and if that's something I wish I could have done better for Songbringer. Maybe Songbringer would have done better financially if I had um, made more people aware of it, you know? It's a... It's a very important thing, very important part of your game's life cycle. Yeah, so dude, I'm excited for you, man. I'm really excited for you. How many spirit cats are there now? So let's see if we can stand right here. He's already getting to be more human. This is great.
So there we go. Seek three, seek four, seek five. Dude, you should have a timer. And you're done. You can't seek anymore. No more seeking. Why are you still seeking? Okay, the seek didn't work. He stayed in mode 40 the whole time. That's a clue. Big clue there. See, he's stuck in mode 40. Seek done if mode 40. If, oh, if timer zero. I think it might go. I think it's not going to need to be less than zero, actually. Let's check out if timer. Behavior if timer. Again, and less than, greater than. What? We're not having an exact value here. Oh, I think timer goes to timer.end anyways. Hold on. Timer.end. Oops, timer. Just timer. Hold on. <laughs> AI.timer. There we go. Timer before, lifetime, delay timer. Timer minus equals delta. If timer is less than... All oh, right, right, right. Okay, it, got, it does set itself to this timer end if it's done. So, yeah, we can successfully say if timer is less than zero. Okay, I think that should work. So now... Let's try and get him into that whole seek, 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 seek situation and see if he keeps, he should, after a little while, give up and not keep looking like an idiot. Oh, and in fact, you probably should have some kind of vector smart inside the seek too. Give up. Come on, do the seek, dude. Do the seek. Go come back over here. Look at me, I'm right here. Okay, now you're just looking stupid. <laughs> uh actually he maybe kinda does look like a human. What are you doing, man? Ah. Uh. Okay, I know he's, okay, I want him to get him in that situation again. Let's see if we get him to just try and seek. There we go. Timer, well, let's slow down time here a bit. He's got no timer. He's supposed to have a timer going. Wasn't well, that weird? Nice, man. Appreciate it. Cool. Hey, yeah, that's nice of you to send me a code. I won't say no, but I'm willing to pay for your game as well. So don't worry about it. If you if you want to get one more sale, don't worry. Wizard Food's got you back. I like it. I love investing in my my friends. My game development friends, love it. I like to support art. Game development is interactive art. I love supporting games. I love supporting art. Makes me feel good. How about this? You send me a code and I'll also buy your game. That way we can both have a whole gifting exchange going on. Okay, what happened to his timer? T it, wait a minute. There's only one place that he gets into mode 40. And it's right there. So he had to have set a timer
What? But hold on, is the AI? I was specifically looking at his debug info, and it didn't have a timer on it. Delete timer is not equal to timer before. Okay, that's why his timer wasn't ticking. Maybe. Hmm. Oh man, thank you. Appreciate that. <laughs> right on, man. Um, yeah. And if you want me to give out any codes to anyone too, if you want me to like give out codes on a stream, like, um, you know, I'm down to do that. I'll be like, we're gonna have it is gun release stream, and I'll like, I'll be like, yo, everybody, who wants to win a key? We'll give out a couple keys, couple codes. If you're down for that idea I don't know I'm, I'm down to help you out however I can oh maybe okay I'm just gonna set this for now and show the timer permanently and maybe it was that maybe it wasn't actually changing the timer hadn't changed at all There we go. Timer 3.2. Wait a minute. Why is the timer not ticking down? It's hovering at 3.2. What? How could it possibly hover at 3.2 the whole time and not ever tick down? But the delay timer is so weird. Cool, man. Keep that in mind. Love to help you out. Um... I was just looking at this this code. Why is the timer not taking it? This is a huge thing right here. No wonder some of my AI probably isn't working yet. The timer is not. What? You just, you only tick the timer when it's not delaying? This is wrong. How did that sneak in there? Okay, hold on. I'm going to compare this to Songbringer's AI system. All this code was refactored from Songbringer. Let's go back to Songbringer's AI system and look at how it handled the timer because that's weird. That shouldn't be that way. What? It did the same thing? It only ticked down the timer when there was no delay? What? What? How did any of my AI work in Songbringer? It would. Whoa! <laughs> this is. Brain melt. Okay, I'm just gonna leave that for now. Like this. So that I'm. The timer should be ticking down even while the delay is ticking down. My AIs are full of delays right now. Which is part of the whole humanization thing. You know? Nothing is more robotic than a thing that just instantly succeeds at doing exactly the right thing. There we go. Seek. It did do seek done and then it went back into seek. Okay, so he's he's going back into seek because Hmm. Because the player's still nearby. It's like... It's 
it's like maybe he should be forced into the explore mode. He's got this explore target mode 30. Oh. I guess maybe we do need to set target to none. And vector to none. Yeah. There we go. Seek four. Seek done. Hold on. Let's we'll stay over here. Okay. This time he's pathfinding to where I'm at. Let's go over here now, confuse him. What's he gonna do? Oh, he, he path found, find it all the way across there. Huh. Wow, he's doing really good at pathfinding here. But now I'm gonna sneakily go over here, see what happens. He's really dogged. He's a little bit too dogged. There's got to be a way to make it... Well, whoa! He figured it out! This is actually kind of getting interesting. Let's go ahead and... Let's throw back in all the AI. Again. Let's see what happens. Oh, we... We do need a wraith mo Hold on. We need a mode for when they're wraiths. What, are, what should they do when they're wraiths? They can still attack, they just can't attack their own team. And if they die as a wraith, they need to have a delay until they become alive again, or become a wraith again. It's not too much work to get wraiths going. Wraith mode. I know it's hard to tell who's who. I could color all the characters though. Oh, there we go. Now he's a wraith. So this is what we need. We need some AI for when and for when somebody's a wraith, right? So it needs some. Actually, what's really different? He should just be targeting like an enemy. This little blue blob. What is he attacking? He's in mode attack. Target seven, dude. T Whoa, check it out. <laughs> oh, what is going on? Oh, okay, this guy's fighting. Ra Whoa, look how many wraiths there are. This is starting to get a little bit interesting. So this is kind of weird. Everybody piled up in one place. There's one living bot left, it seems. Everybody's chasing me. <laughs> oh man, I can't wait till this is an actual game. Oh, this is still in the beginning stages, you know? Give it the six months though, and this will start to be really interesting. Okay, I'm just gonna let myself die, I guess. Am I dead? Yeah, now I'm a now I'm a wraith. It appears there's one player left, so that that guy should be winning right now. Let's start doing this. We need some win co winning. We need a win. What's it called? Victory scenario. Is that what it is? So this kind of worked. I'm gonna leave this this AI code as as I coded it. We've got this sort of now. It's got his own mode when he's seeking something, and so he can only seek something for a little while. And then he gives up on seeking. And, dude, that was so weird about the AI's timer thing. Oh, I don't... Oh. How did any of the code in Songbringer work like that? It's crazy. It's crazy. Okay. Oh, yeah, we had a little bit of humanization to targeting... 
or yeah, target will vectoring towards your target. And we're creating all the bots. Actually, yeah, let's keep let's keep it as only one bot for a second. Okay, let's check this in. Um. Give bots a seek mode. Okay. So now we need they need to have like a wraith mode. So when once they become a wraith. They need to have different targets, different priorities. Alright. Let's say let's start off with like. See, we kind of want to keep doing all these things, right? Attack, retreat, explore, seek, give up. All these things. You, the, uh, even a wraith needs to do all these things. It's just that. I think we. I think we could get by with something like this, like sequence. We become a wraith. Um, if role changed, if role changed, then we go mode zero, target none, vector none, path none. Right, just kind of reset everything. Go back to mode zero if we become a wraith. Okay, now let's check if this is even working. I coded this already with the if role. Roll none, roll any, roll changed. See if that, um, see if that works. Oh, okay. We're checking if it changed, and it didn't. All right. Let's set that breakpoint inside there. So, okay. So let's kill this guy, or you can kill. Well, yeah, I need to kill him. <laughs> it's really confusing to watch this because nobody has an attack animation. But there, okay, it worked. So we've got roll changed. That succeeded. It's gonna clear its role change flag. It's really only meant for the AI system, so that works. And if we go out of this, step into the next behavior function. I'm planning on having a single really balanced multiplayer battlegrounds um, to start with, right? Like maybe it really kind of depends on where this all goes right in, in the end. Here at the beginning, I just want to have one really good battlegrounds, but maybe there'll be multiple ones in, in at some point in the future. You know, it kind of depends on the um, the popularity of the game, what thing you know, the situation. Once we get to that point where multiple battlegrounds would actually make a difference, but yeah, for now I just want to have one really good one. And in fact, this the art here is really it's nowhere near what it can be. The art's kind of like, it looks bad to me. It's just these weird, these weird like tiles above, above the sky. I'm just focusing on kind of like AI right now. And there's not even any sound effects yet. There's really a lot left to do aesthetically. But I only say that because I'm embarrassed. <laughs> All right, but so we should be seeing it go into the next bit of this behavior. There we go. Target none. Okay, cool. It's going into that. 
All right, so now we've got, okay, we now we have an AI sequence that runs when the AI dies. So that's good. It's a start. Now, now at least the AI is aware once it turns into a wraith. <laughs> this is great. We just hit each other as fast as you can. This is Rochambeau right here. Who's going to win? Better be me. Yes. Okay, there. He turned into... Yeah, cool. Okay, that's better. Because before, he was... um. He had, he still had me as a target, right? So he was like following me around, trying to attack me, but I wasn't, wasn't attackable because now he's on my team. So now he's wandering around. He's a wraith, but he's still wander. Oh, needs a weapon. Oh, thanks, man. Yeah, it's, there's a lot left to do, though, you know, like, to me, I can see a lot of, like, little issues with the art, like, pixels being out of place because it's a voxel engine and all that. I mean, it's, you know, you can, it's pretty interesting what you can accomplish, like, with voxels, but then translating them into a pixel art scene, some of the voxels go missing, some of the voxels are repeated, and I'm dialing in, especially those repeats, like sometimes, like for example, the couple pixels that are part of, of uh, the run AI, or the run uh, animation right here, the couple pixels that are part of his eyes right here, those should only ever be one pixel on the screen, but sometimes they are two pixels. So I'm sure I can figure out something with the voxel engine, figure out how to, how to dial that in. That's one little issue. But you know, there's a, the, it'll, it'll come along. Give it six months, it'll start looking better. But thank you, man. I appreciate you saying that. Okay. Oh, yeah. A wraith. Um, a wraith has a punch. Okay, yeah, what we need is an in, in the input system, we need wraiths to be able to attack. So we need a hold on. Then we got use sword. We also need a use punch and a use shield because the wraiths just punch each other like straight up River City ransom style. And we'll go into data. Hold on, do I already have data punch? Nope. So we'll copy the sword to the punch. This is just a temporary entity that deletes itself after a second. Um, that's what all my attacks are. It's nice to break it down to something simple like that. This is, you know, a player is an entity, but whenever they swing their sword, another little temporary entity is created. It's a nice, neat way to do it. To, to keep it data driven, I guess is the way to put it. All right, so use sword, use shield. Now we got use punch. Ah, uh, we should also do use block because I'm pretty sure I want the wraiths to have their own blocking ability. So this is a sword and shield game. Um, Songbringer had a shield. But Songbringer's shield was you just stood still, which totally fit Songbringer's style, but Wraithbinder's a little bit different. So Wraithbinder, you're actually gonna press a button to use your shield, rather than having to just stand still. Got to release block. Yeah, all right. Use block, use punch, release punch, release block. Use 
use shield, release shield. I think for now, the shield or the block will just be duplicating the, the shield. Same with the re the use block. All right. So now, when a player turns into a wraith, they should be able to still attack. Oh, we should go to punch. And it's got that and that. Okay. Sixty-four by forty-eight, huh? Swoosh A. These guys shouldn't be able to hurt. No, I guess, uh, category sword. Oh yeah, I gotta work on categories. I gotta change that up. We'll keep it as category sword for now. One thing I probably should do is go to this swoosh, a swoosh animation, which is really just a cube. Um, but make this 64 by 48. Fill this whole thing up. Hmm. I've never used the oh there it is oh okay it worked maybe I had to turn on this attach before I click the fill on the tool I was wondering how this worked but so that's <laughs> this is technically the size of that attack Oh, the attack should be rotatable too. Okay, we need to be able to see this rotated. Sword needs render flag. Rotatable. Rot I think it's just rotate, actually. Player has rotate as well. Yeah, rotate. And occlude. There we go. That'll really help there. Also, punch. You know what? It's going to be way easier right now if the punch actually just uses the sword. <laughs> so I don't have to duplicate all those edits to the sword to punch for now. We'll fix that up later. So eventually eventually, I want the, the Wraith's punch ability to be a little bit different than a sword, of course. Still a melee attack, but... Okay, so now it's rotatable. It needs to have a rotation set so we can visually see. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, man. I just realized something pretty important here the collision box that represents this attack, right? This attack can be um, 
if we go to use weapon, it's going to offset its position based on the player's current move heading, but it's not rotating that collision at all. So the collision box is going to be 64 by 48, but if you're facing this angle, it's like you're facing straight to the right or the east, um, then that box isn't actually going to rotate at all. It's just going to stay the same. So it's just going to be like the box is like this, and then all of a sudden it's over here. So no wonder this, this whole weapon and attacking stuff is not quite right. So I do need to really focus on that. But I've kind of I've kind of hit my limit on time here. I'm starting to get that whole I'm hungry look in my eye. And it's been about two hours anyways. Okay. Well, we're going to call it good here on the stream. And that's going to be it for this one. Um, but man, a lot of progress was actually made there. Got the AI moving around a lot more smoothly. And the next things I'll be working on is what I was just talking about there with the weapon... And you can see it here in person, in fact. If I if I run away from this AI, I should be able to use this a weapon and it won't it shouldn't change it shouldn't change its angle at all. Let's just run away. Hopefully he didn't find me. <laughs> ah! Here we go, we're way up here. Well, this is the, the normal angle. If I use it. We're going to see it. Yeah, there, that red box is right there. But if I go to the side, see the red box is still rotated that way. Even though visually it needs to have its own, like, uh, visually, it, the, the visual aspect of it, he found me. The visual aspect of it and the actual collision box, the mathematics of it are different. So even though I'm showing you this picture where it's it hasn't rotated itself, it still could have rotated itself in its collision, but I know it's not. It's not actually rotating itself. So, but this does illustrate the point. We need to rotate this box depending on whatever angle the player is currently facing. And um, what that means is that I'm probably going to need to implement polygonal collision detection. Uh, I say that with dread. I don't really like. I mean, polygonal collision detection. <sighs> it's actually easier than you think for some some just a quick little polygon check. But when it comes to actual mathematics and the way things interact, how does how does a weird polygon interact with another polygon if a, if it's sliding along it, right? That's where it starts to get really complex with poly, poly, polygonal. I don't even know how to pronounce polygonal correctly. Polygonal? It doesn't sound right at all. But anyways, I'm going to have to think about this for a second. Do I want to go with polygons for collision detection? Or do I want to stick with this lovely rectangles? Um, obviously, the rectangles aren't going to work for a 45 degree angle. So what am I going to do about that? I think I have to think about this. A quick question. How much CPU does Bluetooth use? Uh, that's a good question. You're talking about like on a, on a desktop, laptop? Or are you talking about like a mobile device? I'm pretty sure in general it uses a small percentage of your CPU. I don't know. I don't know exactly how much that does use. I know does it does actually use a, a bit of your battery life to have your Bluetooth on and your Wi-Fi as well. I always turn Wi-Fi and Bluetooth off whenever I'm trying to actually use conserve my battery. Like if I want to code all day off one battery or something like that, just turn off Wi-Fi. So yeah, it's got to be using some amount of your CPU and your GPU, but it's probably a small amount. Hope that helps. So there you have it, another stream from your friend WizardFoo. And I'll be coming back to you with another live stream soon, and I'll be thinking about how to do this whole collision detection for these rotated rectangles. All right, guys, thanks for watching, and we'll catch you all next time.